Hi, my name is Lauren Titone, and I'm a PGY1 at the University of Cincinnati in the Department of Emergency Medicine. Before we get going, I'd like to give a big thank you to Dr. Matt Chin for his guidance in putting these lectures together, as well as Dr. Jeff Hill for his technological expertise. This is the first of two videos in which I will be discussing foot x-rays as part of the Grand Rounds Intern Radiology Lecture Series. The objective of the online portion of this lecture is to familiarize you with the basic anatomy and interpretation of the normal foot x-ray. In this first video, I'll be discussing basic anatomy, including the bones and joints of the foot. In the second video, I will be reviewing a basic approach to x-rays, orienting you to the classic views of foot x-rays, as well as discussing how to interpret these films. During grand rounds, I will be applying these skills to several case reports. Here we have an anterior to posterior view of the left foot. The foot is divided into the forefoot, midfoot, and hindfoot. The forefoot is made up of the metatarsal bones and the phalanges. The midfoot is made up of the navicular bone, the cuboid bone, and the three cuneiform bones. The hindfoot is made up of the talus and the calcaneus. Here we can see the foot both medially and laterally. The calcaneus, which is also known as the heel bone, serves as the insertion point of the Achilles tendon. We can see from this view that the cuneiforms are named medially to laterally. You can either refer to these bones as the medial, middle, and lateral cuneiform, or the first, second, and third cuneiform. The cuboid bone is the most lateral in this row of tarsal bones. Now we can compare the lateral view of the bony foot to its associated x-ray. Again, we see that the forefoot is made up of the metatarsals and phalanges. The midfoot is made up of the navicular bone, cuneiforms, and cuboid, which is not visualized on this film. And the hindfoot, which is made up of the talus and the calcaneus. In this view, you can see that the talus is a major component of the angle joint. Next, we will discuss the joints of the foot, of which there are five. The first being the distal interphalangeal joint, which is only present in the second through fifth toes. Next is the proximal interphalangeal joint. Third is the metatarsal phalangeal joint. Next, we have the Liz Franck joint. And lastly, we have the Chopart joint. The Chopart joint is actually made up of two joints, the calcaneal cuboid and the talar navicular. Since the Liz Franck joint is of significant importance in regards to injury, it deserves a little more investigation. Anatomically, the Liz Franck joint is made up of the tarsal metatarsal interfaces. When referring to the foot, the cuboid cuneiform navicular, talar, and calcaneal bones are often referred to as the tarsal bones. You can almost think of the tarsal bones as the carpal bones of the foot, with the metatarsals and phalanges being analogous to the metacarpals and phalanges of the hand. The Liz Franck joint is made up of the articulation of the first through third metatarsal with the medial, middle, and lateral cuneiforms, as well as the fourth and fifth metatarsal, which both articulate with the cuboid. This joint allows for supination and pronation of the foot. The second metatarsal forms the keystone of this complex and is essential to stability. The second metatarsal is held down firmly into place by its tarsal metatarsal ligament, the intermetatarsal ligament, and the strong Liz Franck ligament. Understanding its anatomical relationships will become very important later on when we discuss evaluating this joint for injury. This concludes the first video and the review of basic anatomy of the foot. Next up is a quiz with several questions to test how much you've learned.